Good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome you to our board meeting today here in the Vitus City Hall Chambers. We're just really happy to be here. It's December the 10th, 2018, and this is our only board meeting of the month. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you all and uh, say that if you would like to speak during the hearing of citizens, please take a card from the back table, fill it out legibly, and give it to Kathy Tompkins over to my left, and she'll be glad to uh, have you speak when the time comes to do that at the appropriate time. Uh, would you all please stand for the flag salute under the direction of Venice High School Color Guard and retired Master Gunnery Sergeant Frank Tro Troxel. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are happy this afternoon to have with us a student representative, Thomas Windermuth from Venice High School. Thomas, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Thank you. My name is Thomas Windermuth. I'm from Venice High School. Uh, I am a senior. I've gone to Venice High School all four years. Um, I play football. This was my last year of football, as you may know. Uh, I. I am the student body president of Venice High School, and I've been involved with student government for all four years. Um, I'm also one of the founding members of the principal's cabinet with Mr. Eric Jackson here. Um, and yeah, that's about it. I live in Venice, and I have always wanted to go to Venice High School. My brother, my little brother, didn't make the same choice to go to Venice High School, and so uh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, it's a great place, and I'm just proud to be an Indian, so, yeah. Well, thank you. I, I gave you a, a certificate of appreciation, and we do appreciate you being here. I happen to have gone to the St. Thomas Aquinas game, and I really enjoyed it, except for the loss. But, um, you know, you all played well. You represented Venice this season beautifully. Um, I got to do a, toy, a coin toss at one game, and I got hit with a football uh, incomplete pass uh, at St. Thomas Aquinas. Fortunately, I had my arms crossed like this, so I didn't have much damage, but I wouldn't have admitted to it if it had made me fall on the sidelines. I'd have said, oh, yeah, I'm okay. But um, I, I think that our football team did really great, and Venice High School is such a, a great, great school. And, of course, Eric Jackson. Eric, would you stand, please, our principal? <laughs> who had to put up with me on the way over to the game and back. So I really appreciated that. Thank you, Eric. But thank you, Thomas. And are you um, going to go off to school this next year, your senior? I'm still figuring out my college plans. Uh, but I hope to go somewhere out of state and hopefully somewhere in an Ivy League school or something like, something like that. So Wonderful. I'm still applying, but yep. Well, best of luck to you. Thank you. Today we have two special presentations. Uh, the first one is um, I'm going to invite Roy Sprinkle, our Executive Director of Human Resources, to come to the podium and to make that presentation. Roy? Thank you, Superintendent, Board Members, Mr. Hardy, our student. Good to see a football player, I'm guessing O-line. It's perfect, me too. 
Um, I have a presentation today, we're all getting in the holiday spirit, and in HR, uh, a group of our ladies decided to uh, put together a, a, just a, a fundraiser called a Buck for a Bike. So in doing so, um, the goal was to get enough money together to get the, the one present that all kids want. Not the iPhone, but, but, a, but a bike. So we were able to collect around 850, correct? Uh, $850 uh, towards 12 bicycles. Um, and what uh, uh, Belita has just told me that we just got some more money, so we may be getting another, at least one more. So adding to the list. But every cause has to have champions. And the champions are the ones seated to my right and left. So Valida Clark and Andrew Jordan, both in Human Resources. It's, it's a lot of work whenever you take one of these things on, but they're the ones that pounded it out and walked around, did all the collections. Um, the money was collected from different groups. Uh, a large group was all of the landing staff, but also through facilities and food service. So those groups were coming together to make something happen here at the holidays. Uh, Valida, being very frugal-minded, decided that we would purchase all the bicycles unassembled at a better <laughs> price. So, uh, being the father of 13-year-old twins, I learned a long time ago, you do not buy bikes unassembled. Uh, it did help me in raising funds because um, uh, she said she was having trouble getting to everyone. I said, let me put an email out and see what I can get. And I did solicit the cabinet saying that, you know, we're helping to take donations or if you'd rather volunteer time to put the bikes together, we got 100% donations from everyone, so we got that together quickly. The assembly, uh, actually credit uh, Dr. Bowden for suggesting we use STC students, and they were able to put them together, so they're probably uh, happened much more quickly and much more safely than as if we had done it. So we have all of our bikes put together. In fact, they offered to do personalized license plates for each of the students. Right there. Oh, how great. Isn't that great? Nice job, and a special thanks to all of them. Also, thanks to the Sheriff's Department for donating helmets for each of these students. We want to protect those brains, so we got those in place, and we did have enough money left over to get the bike locks on them as well. So hopefully make a few children smile this holiday season. I'd love to see their faces that day. Um, the people that will get to see their faces are sitting behind me. And we have a lot of our representatives from the different schools here with me. So if I, these are the schools the bikes are going to. So if I can call your school, will you please stand? Uh, Alta Vista, Atwater, Brentwood, Cranberry, Emma E. Booker, Fruitville, Garden, Glen Allen, Gosio, Lamarck, Tuttle, and Wilkinson. And all of those South County schools, we have the bikes here today, so I hope you have your SUVs, because they are going with you. Uh, North County. Just thanks to everyone that, that helped us put this together. Everything's always a group effort, but uh, a special thanks to these two ladies and all those that donated to make this happen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, before we get to our second presentation, um, I would like uh, Shirley Brown, uh, Mrs. Brown, to uh, discuss a little uh, Santa helper initiative that we put together. Um, yeah, while we were up at the uh, FSBA conference last week, uh, uh, Chair Goodwin suggested that we as a board do something, and um, I just happened to be out at the Oak Park um, they had their Christmas bazaar, and we had to go pick up a few things. Um, and they had an angel tree in their hall. And um, I picked a little thing off for a little girl who wanted a dress and a doll. And then I saw another one. This boy wanted a bike. And I'm thinking, ew, that's something hard for one person to do. Oh, that's right. Jane wanted to do something for the board together. So we as a board have uh, got together, and uh, we ordered a bike. And uh, they said it's going to come. And, then, and I might have gotten an email. It might be there now. But they're going to assemble it for me. But I, we got the helmet. We got the lock. I even got a bike pump. And um, so uh, the board also, and I'm glad it's at Oak Park, and it's not one of those schools, so we will not be at the same one. But uh, 
it really makes you feel good when you can go out and know that you can help because I know that's hard for a teacher or someone to take that off. And if anyone's looking to do something, I'm sure a lot of our, our schools have an angel tree that they may still have some names on it. So you might want to check with your school and see if there's an angel tree with some uh, cards still on it. Well, I, I always say that you have many talents, Mrs. Brown, many talents, but one of them is shopping and shopping for a bargain. So uh, I know that you did a really good job for us. So thank you very much because I know you really put in a lot of hard work. So we really appreciate that. That's it was a great, fun. great thing. It gives me a chill to think about it. Okay, for the next presentation, I would like Steve Cantese, our Executive Director of, of Secondary Schools, or what we call Middle and High Schools, to please come to the podium. Steve. So good afternoon, uh, Board Chair Goodwin and uh, school board members, Dr. Bowden, Mr. Hardy, and our student representative. Um, appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here today. Uh, before we get started with the presentations, uh, I, I would like to say that uh, I think we do a quick recognition of the Venice Middle School nine-piece orchestra that would you stand up? Stand up. Please stand up. Woo. They were absolutely amazing. I think over the last week or so and, and heading in next two weeks, I've heard every rendition uh, of uh, Jingle Bells that, that you could possibly hear, and it, it gets, gets me in the school spirit. So before we get started, I'd like to, for the public out there, school board members, uh, we have some incredible musicians, chorus groups, um, certainly some of our drama productions that are centered around the holidays. And uh, let's take advantage, make sure you get out and, and support those schools as you, you all always graciously do. And uh, it's just incredible the talent we have in this district. And, and we get supported by our arts community in so many ways, and it, it comes back tenfold in uh, the work that our students do. So uh, I just want to thank the students for their work and, as well as all of the schools out there. Today, I'm going to be very brief. Uh, I, I do want to have the opportunity. I, I, I have the easy job today. Uh, we have Eric Jackson, the principal of Venice High School, a high-performing high school here in Sarasota County and A school. Eric is here, and he is going to do a, a brief presentation on Venice High School. And um, then I have uh, Principal Tomas Denverno. He is our principal at Venice Middle School. Uh, every time we come to Venice, we like to feature uh, the, the Venice area schools. I think it's a great opportunity to, to highlight some, some incredible work that's going on uh, in our schools. So uh, Mr. Denverno has actually brought some students with him and they will be uh, featured during the presentation. So that'll be exciting and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So Mr. Jackson, if you wanna come up. Good afternoon, school board members, Mr. Hardy, Superintendent Bowden, Thomas. Uh, in Venice, schools are the pride of our community. And so thank you for the opportunity today to showcase Venice High School. Our school exemplifies what a strong school community partnership can do to support students. Our local community has a longstanding history of providing great support in our school and its many programs. In this presentation, I will share recent points of pride that makes Venice High School so special. And if you were to look at the campus on this visual here, it looks much different from when Venice High School first opened its doors in 1955 to Sarasota County students. Today, Venice High School is an expansive state-of-the-art facility that was completed in 2014. It serves nearly 2,250 students with a student population that is trending even higher, which I'm sure you have discussed. <laughs> We have so much to be proud of at Venice High School. The following slides represent the significant initiatives we have undertaken and the programs that we have established in support of our students. I'd like to begin by speaking to our superintendent's priorities. The three significant priorities set by Superintendent Bowden serve as the foundation for our school's planning efforts. At Venice High School, our collective goal is to ensure every student has access to a high quality educational program that offers a rigorous, relevant, and coherent progression of learning for students that result in student growth and achievement. Our students graduate Venice High School possessing the knowledge and skills necessary for the 21st century workforce. A workforce that requires students to critically and creatively think, 
and have the ability to effectively collaborate and communicate. Earning an A rating. Venice High School has been recognized again by Florida's Department of Education as an A-plus school in conjunction with the Florida School Recognition Program for sustained high student performance. Our school grade is the direct result of effectively hiring and retaining highly talented and well-trained professional educators. They ensure that our students are exposed to challenging and rigorous learning experiences. Every day, our teachers challenge our students to be creative and critical thinkers. Additionally, we attribute our academic success to the considerable support we receive from our families and our local community. Today, or together, they ensure that our students come together and are ready for school every day. As Dr. Bowden likes to reference in, in past presentations, anytime one looks at a chart and the arrow is pointing up and to the right, that's a good thing. And I'm pleased to uh, share the results that we've been able to accomplish together here over the last two years in particular. We have experienced an 82 point jump in our school grade performance. Wow. Emphasize up and to the right. The significant gain in school grade performance is largely attributed to our ongoing efforts to be data driven and to focus on high effect influences regarding student learning. At Venice High School, teachers and administrators alike regularly review student performance data to make well-informed decisions that support student learning. At Venice High School, our professional development efforts have centered on high, influ high effect influences that positively impact student learning. We have embraced the research and the study of John Hattie. He's a well-renowned educational researcher who wrote Visible Learning for Teachers a few years back. Visible Learning is based on 25 years of research and synthesis. He has focused his research, research on creating the conditions under which optimal student learning can occur. We referenced the 10 mind frames as a means of establishing a mindset for our teachers in their approach to teaching and learning. The I in all the mind frames represents the teacher. I am an evaluator. My job is to understand my impact on student learning and achievement. I am a change agent. The success or failure of my students' learning is about what I do or don't do. I talk about learning more than teaching. This keeps the student at the center of the conversation. I see assessment as feedback to me. Assessments show my effect. Assessment results are a reflection of my effort more than my students. I teach through dialogue, not monologue. This involves listening more than talking. I embrace challenges. As Hattie says, making errors is the best way to learn. I develop positive relationships in the class and in my school. I inform all about the language of learning. I ensure all stakeholders agree on what learning looks like and how it is measured. I recognize that learning is hard work. I empathize with my students and acknowledge their hard work. Finally, I collaborate. Teacher collaboration is critically important to student success. These 10 mind frames have been instilled into our daily work with students. Our roadmap to success. As the school principal, it's incumbent on me to ensure that we, one, increase the knowledge and skill that our teachers bring to the instructional process. Two, that they increase the level and complexity of the content that students are asked to learn. And finally, three, change the role of the student in the instructional process. Aligning our work with Superintendent Bowden's priorities and the study of visible learning, our roadmap to student success begins with answering the following question. What can we do together to best support quality teaching and provide quality learning for all students? Together, we strive to create rich environments where all students are challenged and learn at a high level. For the past three years, this is the very slide that my teachers have seen on day one of pre-week. These key components have been the focus of our collective work. Together, it serves as the basis of meeting the needs of every student every day and ensures that our teachers know their impact regarding student learning. We. In terms of what we offer our students in, in uh, academic programming, we offer several accelerated course offerings. We are very proud of our recent expansion of accelerated course offerings at Venice High. An increasing majority of our students are now taking accelerated coursework in the form of advanced placement, dual enrollment, and international baccalaureate programs. We also offer a variety of career and technical programs as well. Our IB programs, both career and diploma, aspire to help us to develop well-rounded students. 
with character. IB students are indoctrinated into a program that establishes a mindset that responds to challenges with optimism and an open mind. Through this program of study, students are exposed to experiences that lead to confidence in their own identities. Students consider and make ethical decisions, celebrate our common humanity, and apply what they have learned to the real world. The program is also intended to instill in our students the knowledge that they will make them better learners and make them better people. Last year, we first brought the AP Capstone, the Advanced Placement Capstone Program to Venice High School. The Capstone courses require students to analyze topics through multiple lenses to construct meaning or gain understanding, to plan and conduct a study or investigation, and to propose solutions to real world problems. At Venice High School, we also offer several career technical programs. Oops, let me go back, sorry about that, here we are. And connects how core, core school subjects like math, science, and writing are used in real life. Our career technical programs serve as a foundation for developing the academic and technical skills necessary to succeed in future careers. Successful completion of these respective programs can lead to certifications and credentials that can be utilized in the workplace and are recognized by the state as an accelerated program of study. We also offer considerable intensive support programs for our students, particularly at-risk students. At Venice High School, we dedicate a tremendous amount of time, energy, manpower, and resources to ensure all students have the appropriate access and support required to experience academic success. As for our school-wide support team and our children at risk education team, we have teachers, counselors, administrators, and support staff working together to determine what constitutes success for each child that they serve. They work with teachers to determine what forms of high quality instruction and interventions will most effectively match a student's need. On a weekly basis, they monitor progress frequently to make decisions about changes in instruction or goals and applying child response data to important educational decisions. Through our Exceptional Student Education Services Program, a student support services team is committed to providing an integrated system of supports that meets the needs of every student. Our ESE liaisons, our behavior specialists, teachers, aides, school psychologists, school social worker, and school counselors work together to meet the academic, emotional, physical, and behavioral needs of all students. This year, we established a newly formed Grade 9 Transition Academy. This academy supports at-risk Grade 9 students transitioning to the high school experience. This is a proactive approach to supporting our graduation rate. This cohort of students are part of a smaller learning community with an emphasis on character, personalization, relationships, rigor, and relevance. This program provides individual contact with teachers, counselors, our behavior specialists, and the assistant principals. Students take a leadership class that not only prepares them to be college and career ready, but also become productive members of our community. Our team of teachers possess a shared vision of effective instruction focused on closing the achievement gap. Coincidentally, tomorrow they'll be attending a field trip to STC. And then finally, we have our performance-based diploma program. Last year, our team of four teachers worked closely with several Venice High School students to earn credits necessary for graduation. I am proud to report that last year, our students earned a combined total of nearly 1,000 half credits. This was a significant contributing factor leading to our 94% graduation rate. When I think of Venice High School, I think of ways in which we are constantly trying to help kids feel connected to our school. Venice High School offers a variety of extracurricular programs, sports, clubs, and activities for students to develop their talents and make them well-rounded individuals. We're always striving to encourage student participation in activities that connects them to our school, which increases their chances of graduating and being successful. Venice High School offers the most athletic teams in the district with 17 programs. Those include baseball, basketball, cheerleading, cross country, football, girls flag football, golf, lacrosse, soccer, softball, swimming, tennis, track, volleyball, water polo, weightlifting, and wrestling. Girls and boys across the board in many of those athletic endeavors. Our purpose is to help nurture, guide, coach, and develop our students to not only graduate, but to become productive citizens and successful in life. 
So a question was asked of me about a year and a half ago. I was at my son's graduation at Sarasota High, and, and I happened to come across Dr. Kingsley, and we were talking about the year as a whole. It was my first year here at Venice High School. And uh, the question that she raised, because she always gives me deep questions to consider and ponder. And so this one uh, certainly was right there at the top. And so as we got through our pleasantries, she asked me a, a critical question, which was, at the high school level, what are we doing to make sure that every student wants to come to school each and every day? And that was a big question, and I didn't have an answer for her at that moment as we were getting ready for the graduation to begin. But I did give it a lot of thought over the course of the next couple of weeks, and it dawned on me um, you know, that we as high schools um, implement what's called advisory period. And so it was an opportunity for me to rethink and restructure what does advisory mean to Venice High School. And that really began to establish uh, a whole new approach to how do we help students feel connected. And basically, we have many students who arrive to school every day by bus, by car, they walk, and they do their periods of, of class time, and they get back on the bus, they get in the car, they walk home, and they really never feel connected with the school. They take their classes and they move on. They really don't ever feel that high school experience that we strive to, to have them feel. And so um, with that said, we get to a point where we want more kids to feel more connected and have that high school experience that we strive for. So having said that, a student, as far as we're concerned, um, will be more willing to come to school when they've experienced success, they feel included, they feel connected, and, they, and they, they be, that they belong. Students are more likely to succeed and want to come to school when they believe that, that adults in the school care about them and their learning and about them as individuals, that they feel that they belong, that education matters, and that they have friends. So we attempted to set the stage for this uh, by, ha by establishing a weekly program intended to help students connect with teachers, peers, and the school. We called it VHS Connects. VHS Connects is a result of substantial brainstorming and collaboration with several staff members. We planned for countless hours during the summer of 2017 to determine the logistics involved in making this program successful. Today, we have multiple community partnerships that are directly involved in the activities we offer. If you'd like to see those many activities, please check out vhsconnects.com. Uh, we're always seeking community support and participation for these activities. What was that website? vhsconnects.com. A particular source of pride for us at Venice High School is our Rotary Futures program. It is a, is a, a program that was built based on a network of relationships um, that our school and our district quite simply need to help our students in their post-secondary endeavors. Our Rotary Futures Career Center is a prime example of a network of relationships working together for the common good. Each year, there's an increasing amount of scholarship money that our students receive to help students get accepted into college and other post-secondary op opportunities. When the program started in 2001, our senior class received $585,000. Last year, the class of 2018 received over $7 million in scholarship awards. And I'd be remiss if I did not speak to our athletics. So I'll bring our state champions. So over the last two school years, we have celebrated a state championship football team, volleyball team, baseball team, most recently, as you may recall, a boys swimming team, and last year we had a wrestler. And so uh, as we look ahead, you know, we, we feel really good about uh, the direction that our athletic programs are, are taking us. Um, having said that, uh, we will, oops, excuse me, let me go back. Um, I want to talk just briefly about each of those particular programs. In volleyball, last year, our volleyball team won the AA State Championship. It was their fifth title in, I think, 25 years. Um, Coach Wheatley earned the Herald Tribune Coach of the Year and was inducted in the FHSAA Hall of Fame. Uh, this year, our team made it to the state semifinals. Um, and probably uh, an equally proud moment is our team has a joint effort 3.375 GPA. So they have done well academically as well as athletically. Our football team last year, they won the 7A state championship. It was their second title in 
18 years. Coach John Peacock was named Coach of the Year for the state of Florida. Uh, this year, again, similar theme to our volleyball team, at the hands of St. Thomas Aquinas, lost in the state semifinals. But I'm proud to say that our football team was also second in their 7A division with a 3.347 GPA. Thank you, Thomas. Baseball, they won their 7A state championship, which was, which was Coach Faulkner's fifth title as well. And he was named 7A Dairy Farmers Coach of the Year, named as a USA Today Florida Coach of the Year, and was also recently inducted in the FHSAA Hall of Fame. Finally, speak to boys swimming. Most recently, they won a state championship, regional championship and district championship. Uh, they academically also performed well, third in the 3A division boys swim team with a GPA of 3.673. So they're doing their part academically and athletically, and so we're quite proud of them. And finally, as I bring this to closure, for our staff, every student every day is not just words. That's, those are words that we do live by. Um, it is something that we emphasize at the start of the year, will be emphasized throughout the year, um, because that is what we believe in. It is about making a difference in the lives of students. I'm very proud of the collective work that we do. I look forward to what we will continue to accomplish together. And I'd like to thank all of you for the opportunity to showcase what I consider to be an amazing school supported by an equally amazing school community. Thank you. Comments? Comments? Well, I would just like to say, because of course, I know a lot of the things that you're doing, not as many as I should, but I do know a lot of them, and I, I do get your weekly update, which I find to be very, very helpful. And I know uh, the VHS Connects has done a great, a great deal for those students that weren't connected to get them in, into some form of connection. But you have a terrific school, and you're a great leader, and I've seen you give power to your... Uh, assistant principals and to your teachers and department heads and everybody is accountable and everybody does a great job. I think you could run, run a county or a city <laughs> after running a high school because it's really a very, very difficult job. It, you never leave it. it. We were in Fort Lauderdale and we were getting text about what was going on at, uh, at the VPAC that night. So there's just never any way of leaving it. But of course, because it is sort of like a city, it's, it really does have some similarities to running a municipality. But you did a, a terrific job, Eric. And uh, I want to say thank you for all you do for our students. Thank you. Ms. Um, Brown. Um, I, too, want to thank you. I mean, you, you make us all so proud. We can, you know, we can do, you know share in that share on that, uh, all those wins that you've had and all you've had to do. But I'm, I'm really, really thrilled about that one slide you said about the teachers. Uh, that's what it's all about. I mean, we got great, great sports teams, but they've got great academics too. And, and, and that's what we always have to keep our mind on is those academics. And, um, and my, teach, my daughter has a, I wanted to change the world, so I became a teacher. Um, I don't know if any of you saw 60 Minutes last night, and it was about, um, I don't know what his last name was. His first name was Speedo. Very angry, young uh, African-American boy who, um, it, family was a mess, and, and he was angry. He, you know, showed up in fourth grade, 10-year-old boy, and first day of school, sits down, sees the teacher, and throws the desk at her. Um, she responded by taking away his chair and telling him that when he um, wants to behave and, and earns the, res you know, that he's going to sit there, she, she will give it back to him. And he was, um, but it's, it, it turned out, I mean, though, that kind of support, and then it even went one step further after he had been arrested for, I guess, getting in a fight with his mom and brother, um, she went to see him in the juvenile detention facility where he often got locked up um, and would scream and they think, um, but it turned out that that care that this teacher continued to show him, he, down the line, <laughs> he saw a opera show and they told, well, if you want to be an opera singer, uh, you've got to get your high school diploma, you, you, you've got to go to high, you've got to graduate, you've got to go to college on a music thing, you've got to get a master's in music, 
and you've got to learn four languages, and you know, rather than telling him, no, you can't do it, and now he's one of this, this, this magnificent opera singer. And, and it was a teacher that made the difference when he was 10 years old. And it's those teachers that understand that what they do makes a difference uh, on all of those. And, 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 and when, whenever we have a teacher that uh, doesn't understand that, you know, that's where we failed. I mean, we, every teacher we have, I believe, understands how important that is and how important those teachers are. And, uh, you know, it kind of reminds me of that starfish that's dying on the, you know, you throw that one back. Well, you know, those teachers know that, you know, for that one child, they, they may be the world. They may be the thing that changes in those. And I know that there's teachers out there that have touched all of us. And, and, and I love that slide on those teachers and what their mindset is. Thank you. Thank you. And tell all of your teachers. Eric, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I go to Venice High uh, as much as I can, probably probably too much, or probably wishes I wasn't there as often, but um, it's, it's a pretty cool school. Um, one of the programs I want to mention that you didn't mention was the Renaissance program, which kind of goes yes. to what Shirley was talking about, about, you know, kids who may not, you know, be on the football team like uh, Tomas, um, kids who may not be getting, you know, straight A's, but the kids who, you know, are struggling, going through life, but they're trying to do the best they can. And we have teachers at, at Venice High who started a, an organization that say, we see you, we know what you're doing, and we want to recognize you. So so in Venice, they, they, they have a group that does that, and they have banners, and they, and they, they put up mirrors around the, around the school, um, highlighting that fact. So that's really good. You go to the sports, and you'll see the teachers who come to cheer on their students. You'll see the custodians in their break time um, which is a very valuable time, they'll come in to check in on the game and see how it's going. Um, it really, and Venice High is a, is a sense of community. Um, there, it's, a, it's a gathering place for, for multiple organizations on the weekends. Um, you know, I, I was there last night with my, my daughter for Venetian Bay. Um, so it's, it's, it's not just a school. It's a place of community, and it's also a place to, to grow, grow people. So thank you very much, Mr. Jackson. Thomas. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that part of running a city or running a school is understanding that you can't do it all by yourself. And I think that Mr. Jackson has been very open to lots of new ideas. I think that's what made your job so far so successful. And uh, I think VHS Connects and uh, all the different programs that you've instilled have really helped our community grow. And I've, as a student, I was there for your, all, all of your time at Venice High. And I I've noticed a significant difference in just the mindset of the kids around me, and I think that it's still growing, and Venice High Schools will continuously grow. However, I just want to thank you for being so open-minded and accepting all these new ideas with open arms, because I think that's really important to growing our school. So thank you. Thomas? Well, I think that's very true, and I think that a great leader uh, really empowers all those that work with him and for him, and you do that in an exemplary way. Steve Cantese, take note, please. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm probably partial, and that's okay, because I can do that. Anybody <laughs> else for a comment? Don't leave Venice. Go Venice. Well, I want to say go Venice, yes, <laughs> and, uh, and thank you for this today. Thank Thanks. you. So again, uh, thank you, Eric. We appreciate the, the presentation of Venice High School. So another A school here in, in uh, the Venice area, Venice Middle School. We're going to have the principal come up, introduce the uh, uh, presentation they're going to do, and then we will. Uh, he's going to have some students come speak to you today, so it should be pretty special. So uh, Mr. Dimberno, Tomas Dimberno, if you'll come on up. Appreciate it. Oh, I like the horses. Thank you, school board, for allowing us the opportunity to speak with you today. And uh, of course, I couldn't speak myself without bringing our wonderful students in Sarasota County. Uh, I couldn't bring all 794 chargers with me today. Uh, and of course, you heard uh, from Mr. Jackson about our community support for our school and the great things that are happening 
in our Sarasota County Schools, especially here in Venice. Wanted to say something that Mr. Jackson said uh, about having our students be productive citizens in our world. And that's really the core of what we do in education. And my involvement at Venice Middle School has really shown that that's a really uh, foundation and been in place many years of the school. Uh, something on our marquee that it says it's our hometown middle school. Uh, you really feel that at the school and uh, the students will share some of the things that they uh, have learned that will help them be lifelong learners. Um, the proud principal there at uh, the school and lived here in Venice uh, since 2003, so I love the community. We have great support from our business partners, our families. Uh, we have fantastic teachers and staff, uh, very hardworking and dedicated, as you all know, from across our county. So we appreciate the opportunity, and you're going to hear from our student ambassadors today, Builders Club. Both of those are student organizations, uh, as well as our Young Marine program and our Gifted Academy students, as well as our athletics. So a little bit of our a well-rounded education at Venice Middle School. Hi, my name is Kelsey Sell. Hi, my name is Charlotte Helmer. And we are in sixth grade. Student ambassadors are a group of 30 students that promote our school culture and student involvement. This student organization is in its fifth year and growing. We are here to help when students get lost or confused at the beginning of the year or when new students start school. We also go into in the community and visit the local elementary schools to talk with fifth grade students about moving up to middle school and our VMS values. We have high hopes for our school and to develop ourselves as community leaders. Anika and Patrick will talk more about community involvement. Good afternoon. I am Nico Holshoff, a sixth grader and president of the Venice Middle School's Builders Club. Hello, and I'm Patrick McDonald. I am in sixth grade, and I am our vice president. We are very excited to be here representing Builders Club. Builders Club, Builders Club is a student-led community service organization <coughs> for middle school students. We are part of the Kiwanis International Organization. Venice Middle School has not had a Builders Club charter in the past 13 years. However, with the help of the local Kiwanis Club of Venice, we were reinstated this school year. Our Builders Club pledge states, we pledge to provide opportunities for working together in service to school and community, to develop leadership potential, to foster development for a strong character, to encourage loyalty to school, community, and nation. Since the start of the school year, we have participated in Clean Up Sarasota, collect 928 pairs of socks for the Twig organization, P&Js in a book, an outreach program with the Kiwanis Club of Venice, and this past weekend we collected donations for the Salvation Army. We at Venice Middle School believe that not only is Venice in our name, but it's in our hearts. It is our home. Hi, my name is Karen Merritt, and I'm in sixth grade, and we're here to talk about the main core qualities Venice Middle School values, respect, responsibility, and safety. Hi, my name is Claire Trimman. I am a sixth grade student ambassador at Venice Middle School. The core values that Venice Middle School focuses on are responsibility, respect, and safety. The core values represent a pathway to our own success as Venice Middle School students. In our everyday Venice Middle School lives, we're often faced with choices that relate to our three core values. They assist us in making the right decisions every day. They also aid us in making the foundations of a healthy lifestyle, whether it be something relating to school like studying for a test or to simply lend a helping hand to others. They empower us to change our lives for the better. Good afternoon, I am Young Marine Sergeant Brenna Magelkane. And I am Young Marine Sergeant Gracie McMinn, and we are both 8th graders of Venice Middle School. Today we will be talking about respect in the Young Marines and its importance. I found out about Young Marines through the community. After learning about the community's respect for the Young Marines, I considered this route. Once I joined Young Marines, I learned many important lessons, one of these being respect. The Young Marines program teaches respect through our leaders. We have seen our leaders be very respectful and have learned to become more like them. For instance, when we first joined the Young Marines program, we learned from the upperclassmen by watching them be respectful and how to use it with others. 
One of the ways that we show respect towards the community is through volunteering, such as beach cleanups and toys for tots. Through community service, we are teaching our young Marines that showing respect is important and can make a difference. Overall, the Young Marines program highlights the importance of respect to others and to the community. Thank you for your time. Hello, my name is Natalie Hill and I am in seventh grade representing the Gifted Academy. There is one truth that I have learned in my short 12 and 3 quarters years on this earth. The one ingredient you can never go wrong with and a recipe for success is grit. Psychologist Angela Duckworth, author of the book Grit, defines it as perseverance and passion for long-term goals. Having a passion for a goal and pressing on despite obstacles makes all the difference. In other words, grit defines one who might pair hard work with passion when faced with a tough challenge. So, one may wonder how this grit, this unfaltering perseverance, correlates to the concept of responsibility at Venice Middle School. As middle schoolers, reaching our goals is an important part of growing up. In fact, it is our responsibility to face challenges in everyday settings, moral obligations to ourselves and our peers. Whether we want to do well on our Algebra 1 exams or face our fear of skydiving, we, need, we know we need to persevere and get gritty. Having grit and responsibility isn't something one has to be born with. Rather, it can be taught and learned. VMS strives to challenge, inspire, and support each student to reach his or her goals, focusing on helping students build grit and a sense of responsibility to benefit them in later years. To further illustrate, Venice Middle School is a place of study where passionate teachers instill a love of learning where lifelong habits of stamina and responsibility are formed. Both teachers and students value new and challenging academic experiences and seek the satisfaction and reward that comes from dedication, commitment, and hard work. Great. Finally, students at VMS learn to advocate for themselves in a learning environment that promotes a strong sense of responsibility in preparation for high school and eventually college. Learning to be responsible, along with developing grit, is a natural part of the VMS community, a school community where every student is known, accepted, and respected. We are given this duty to uphold this responsibility to better help the community and ultimately the world. It is as simple as a quote in one of my teacher's classrooms, go out and put good things into the world. To me, this means I have a responsibility to myself and everyone. To be responsible is to use my potential to make the world a better place. Many of you in this very room know exactly what I'm talking about. You were successful because you have grit and a sense of responsibility to the students of Sarasota County. You probably attended a school much like Venice Bowl that taught you to get gritty and fostered a sense of responsibility. Thank you for inviting us here today and being an example of responsible leaders for the next generation. Yeah. Hello, I'm Emily Ireland. I'm in seventh grade and I am representing student athletics. In today's world, it is important for middle school students to have a safe place to learn, and I am happy to report to you that VMS is just that, a safe place to learn and grow. Students are lucky to have teachers and administrators that take multifaceted approaches that allow us to grow as athletes, community volunteers, thinkers, and leaders. I am actively involved in many activities at VMS. I am a student athlete at VMS, and this fall I played on the tennis team. I also plan to run on the track team in the spring. Venice Mall has a very competitive athletic program. I am learning a lot of teamwork skills and having fun developing my skills in a safe environment. I am also a member of the VMS SAD and SWAT Club. SAD stands for Students Against Destructive Decisions and SWAT stands for Students Working Against Tobacco. This club is made of students who are striving to make our school and community safe. We meet weekly and participate in community activities such as park cleanups with our VMS families. On the Great American Smokeout Day, we encourage parents and students to make healthy life choices by giving out lifesaver mints that said, be a lifesaver. The idea was to encourage students to never start smoking or for parents to quit smoking if they already had. The Sound Swap Club allows me to develop my leadership skills in a safe place with people who have the same goals as me. Another club I'm involved with is Odyssey of the Mind. This is a really fun club that allows us to be creative as we solve a problem that we agree upon. As you know, middle schoolers sometimes need a place where they feel safe to be themselves. In OM, everyone is accepted and creative ideas are expressed without the fear of being judged. Also, as we work on our long-term problem, the student leaders change. This allows us to develop our creative thinking and leadership skills in a safe place. Finally, there is also a leadership training organized by Mr. Dinverno and its main focus was kindness. 
Being kind is an important part of our school. It helps to create a feeling of community and a sense of safety for everyone who goes to VMS. So as you can clearly see, VMS is an amazing school that provides students a variety of opportunities. The school board, as you can see, our students really preparing to be lifelong learners. They're in that path, and Mr. Jackson is going to be a proud principal as these students move up to high school and beyond. Uh, I want to thank our teachers. We have our college and career ready teacher here, Mrs. Hagan, helping those students be focused on those next things in life as well. And you got to hear the wonderful things our orchestra performed. We have student artwork in the lobby. I also want to thank Mrs. Hines for her leadership in our orchestra and arts program and your time. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity to represent Venice Middle School, our hometown community school. Thank you. Any questions or comments? I told me you have questions. They're ready. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a question, but I just want to say thank you so much. I love how you, thank you for bringing them here, and thank you for participating, and you guys spoke very, very well. I know it's not easy, so congratulations, and again, thank you for bringing such a diverse uh, sample of all your students, so keep up the great work. Mr. Robinson. Yeah, I, I want to thank you guys, too, and I, I, I do want to, you know, sing out Ms. Ms. Hagan for everything that she does. Not only what she does for the school, but what she does for our entire community. So, thank you. Mrs. Zucker, you're next. <laughs> I'd like to thank all of you. I was very impressed by what you wrote and how you spoke and how you handled yourself. Thank you so much for taking the time to come here today and let us have a small snapshot of what you do and what you perform every every day in your school. And to us, it's always good to see you. Thank you. Mrs. Brown? I, I again want to thank you all for coming. And, and, you know, and I know you're not thinking about getting jobs and all those things yet, but, you know, you need to start building your resume because you've got things to start putting on it. And your resume is what you've done to this point. And, and the things that you're doing in your schools right now, you're building your resumes already in your middle school. And you add that on to what you're going to be doing in high school, because I know you're going to be filling in more, because those are the things they're going to be looking at when you're looking for a job uh, part-time and when you're going on to college. So keep track of these things that you're doing right now, because you're building your resume, and you're building your worth right now. And, and, I, and I'm just so pleased to see our young people stepping up to the plate and, and, and really really pulling it through. Thank you. Dr. Bowden? You guys are wonderful. I sit here and I think to myself, I have to talk in front of an audience on a regular basis as part of my job. And so there may be a future superintendent standing right in front of me. I couldn't imagine, I could not imagine addressing a school board on live TV as a 6th, 7th, and 8th grader. You didn't know it was live TV, did you? I didn't tell Matt part. <laughs> <laughs> so some wide eyes there. Okay. Well, it's probably best to tell you after you spoke. But you guys did a great job. Great job. And I can see the smile on your principal's face. And it's always good to make your principal smile. It is not only live, but it's tape. <laughs> Thomas, do you have any comments? Um, I was a lot like you guys, I feel like, in middle school. And I was I tried to participate in as much as I could. And I, I, I'm talking like I'm, you know, so successful and older. I just go to high school, but um, keep keep up the good work. Uh, I didn't go to Venice Middle, but it sounds like a great school, and we didn't have a young Marines program or anything like that. So, um, yeah, I, I think you guys are doing great, and good luck in your in your future for those of you who are going to Venice High School. Well, I want to say I agree with everything that was said here. I was just amazed by some of the comments that you made, and you have a wonderful principal, great leader. You have a fabulous school. We know uh, how successful Venice Middle School is. Uh, but I just want to say the things that I was impressed with, yes, was your your um, your ability to to command and to be, seemed to me that you weren't nervous at all. Uh, but the, um, the things that you said about caring and responsibility and those issues, which, you know, once you learn the the issues of caring for others and being responsible and being involved and keeping your word and being honest and, and doing those things that you all are working with diligently now, 
uh, those are things you use all the rest of your life. So uh, I just want to say to all of you, thank you for being here today. Uh, thank you for, for presenting this great information to us. Um, thanks for being involved with Venice Middle School. And um, I hope you have a wonderful uh, end of school year. I don't know if you have exams next week or any kinds of anything to end the, this, uh, the first term, but good luck and have a wonderful holiday. I hope uh, Santa's good to you, that you have a, a really great holiday and come back to us in January uh, having experienced all the joy of the holiday season. So thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. And next, we move on to our superintendent's report, Dr. Bowden. Yes, ma'am. Just a couple items of note. This is the second year at which our first semester will complete before the winter holidays. Uh, our last day of school will be Thursday, December 20th. Uh, most of our high school students will be involved in midterms throughout the week next week. Uh, Friday the 21st is a professional day, and we'll welcome our students back in attendance on man Monday, January 7th. Um, I also want to make you aware that uh, district-wide on Friday morning, we're going to do a lockdown drill at all of our school sites. Uh, I want to be very specific. It's a lockdown drill. We've gotten rid of our codes. In past years, we might have called it a code red drill. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that we learned in an in after action uh, from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School is they had a very sophisticated emergency management system. They had a number of color codes. Um, and in the heat of the moment, what you need is plain language. Uh, and so we've gone to a plain language system. Uh, we have three levels. Uh, we have lockdown, we have a modified lockdown, and we have evacuation. And so district-wide at 945, we're going to do a lockdown at all of our school sites. We are going to do a connect ed to make sure that our community is aware. Uh, this first drill will be rather simple, uh, but we will add complexity as the year goes by and different elements. Uh, this one will be announced in advance, uh, but this begins a series of monthly drills uh, in which we start to practice, uh, test those policies and procedures. It's our hope that after doing this drill, uh, that we get lots of questions back because it's those questions that allow us to refine our system. And so we hope we get people saying, well, what do we do in this situation? And what do we do in that situation? And then we can use that to get better. Uh, but wanted to make you aware that will be district-wide Friday at 945. Caroline? I was wondering. I was caught in a lockdown. Um, and the, there was a small room that we were in with three other classes in there. Is there any way when that happens that the air conditioner can be turned up? Because we were in there almost two hours, and it was really hot, and I felt for those kids. They were so stuffy, you know, and they didn't know what to do with themselves. Is there anything that we can do to make it more comfortable? Certainly. That's, um, that's certainly can you that's never thought of. Can you institute? Well, it's a matter of knowing which areas need it, so well, the level of communication. Um, small classrooms, it, uh, where I was, it's the small classrooms in between the two classrooms. And so that's the kind of information we hope to capture as we go through drills like this, as people say, well, what happens if? And so our first drill is very simple. It will take place uh, while students are in class and will allow uh, teachers to talk about, you know, what safe zones are in class and what the procedures are. Uh, and then we'll build in complexity. Um, in the first one, uh, we're able to control some of those variables. And so the situation you got caught in uh, is a little more complex in regards to what do you do if you have three classes in, in one, uh, and how do you adjust to that circumstance? But I'll get some specifics from you, and we'll see if we can fix that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. It's the wait outside. Mrs. Ziegler? Um, no, I just wanted to add thank you for running these drills. And I know that this has been something we talk about. And I have read some districts doing it um, without notice. And I'm not sure what our you know future plans are. But I think that um, in, at least for a starting point, catch, keeping our community engaged. And I think you made the point of that uh, there'll be a lot of questions afterwards, rightfully so. And so, um, you know, I think it's unfortunate we have to do this, but we do have to do it. And preparedness is the best way to do it from all ages. And so this is for every school, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So 
Um, well, thank you, because I think the training piece is, is paramount to all of us uh, being prepared. God forbid anything happens. So I'd like to hear it. Thank you. And so just to build on that, this is one that we're going to announce and publicize, um, but it is our intent before year end to do it as a surprise drill, a little more complex scenario. Uh, but to begin with, uh, we want our principals to get on the intercom and say, this is what's going to happen and here's how you're expected to react now. Let's practice. Uh, so it's really a teaching moment and then you get to test it in further ways as you build complexity. Um, you have seen a number of these drills take place around the state uh, and so you want to make sure that you're emphasizing that it is a drill uh, as you're going through the, the scenario. Matter of fact, there was a a drill conducted last week of which they weren't real clear it was a drill uh, and caused uh, some undue anxiety. Uh, so there is a, a balance to be had between preparedness uh, and then overly stressing our students. And so we want to make sure that we're prepared for a number of scenarios and we'll get more complex as the year goes on. Uh, Mrs. Brown? Um, when we talk about lockdown, I mean, we've had lockdowns or code reds before. They have nothing to do with an active shooter situation. What other kinds of situations um, might require a lockdown in a school? Well, and I think it's important that we differentiate between a lockdown, which is an active situation on a particular school campus, and a modified lockdown. Uh, I don't know that we've always provided that clarity in the past, is that uh, there are a number of issues that may originate off of a school campus, a bank robbery, a car chase, a shooting in a, 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 a nearby apartment complex that would cause us to go into a modified lockdown in which there's no immediate threat to the campus, but you want to control who comes and goes, keep students in class, but you want instruction to continue. Um, and so that's one of the things we want to work through is when do we need to go into a lockdown uh, and when do we use the modified lockdown procedure? Uh, just sorry <laughs> to go into questions, but um, do families know since we're changing that? And I appreciate. I'm glad we are doing it in more layman terms. But because there's three different ones, I mean, so families because in the event this one's planned, right? So in the future, when we and we're communications team doing a great job when we have circumstances like that. But so that parents know what that means. Is there somewhere for them to go, or will we have something that will just kind of be the definition of okay? So this. When your school goes into a modified lockdown, X, Y, and Z is typically taking place. Sure. And so um, we have site safety teams at every school in the district, uh, and they're charged with the communication piece when it's at the individual school level. Uh, they're also charged with it's easy to put policies and procedures, and typically you get 80 or 90% of the way, and then there's unique circumstances right. on individual um, school level. Uh, so as an example, we provided some resources uh, through our communications department this week. Uh, there's a video starring Tim Enos, our new uh, chief of police, which uh, we commandeered a classroom at Riverview High School uh, and kind of demonstrated. So he and I uh, worked with students and produced a video with our communications folks. But uh, the direction to principals is that's the conversation starter. Uh, then talk about how it happens on your campus. And so we'll work with school sites to provide them information. When it's a school-wide or district-wide activity, the communication will originate from the district. Uh, when it's an individual school, it'll the communication will emanate from the school site itself. Any other comments? That concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you. Next, we move on to hearing of citizens. Each citizen speaker will have three minutes to speak, and when the timer flashes, does this timer flash, Kathy? Yeah, it's got green, yellow, red. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, one minute remains, and you need to begin to summarize because you only have three minutes. So you must stop speaking when the buzzer rings. Please note that respect for divergent viewpoints and civility will be shown at every meeting. Whether you agree or disagree with the speaker, you should listen politely and respectfully without making any sounds or approval or disapproval, including clapping. I have one card for speaking, and that is from Pamela Coe. Goff. Uh, I live at 686 North Green Circle, which is in Country Club Estates, right behind Venice High School. And uh, unfortunately, this summer I fell and broke my back, so I'm 
health is in a very negative position. I'm here to ask the school board, I have talked to the principal about the children coming to the school grounds with the boom box playing loud, as loud as loud can be at 6.30 and 7 o'clock in the morning. And I would ask the principal to please ask the children when they come on the school grounds to turn the boom box off, to respect the people who are living right behind them in country club estates. I don't know how many other people are bothered at 6.30 in the morning with this loud noise, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that in country club estates that cannot sleep when their boom boxes are playing. Also, I would like to speak about the many times the lights on the stadium are going on this year. I didn't realize there were 17 athletic programs, but it seems like every athletic program has to have the lights come on at this stadium. I don't know how expensive that is, but I have a feeling it's very expensive to turn those lights on. One went over the other day to check what was going on. The kids were practicing soccer. And I was just wondering why we had the school lights on the stadium on for them to be practicing. They can't come on Saturday afternoon and practice soccer without turning on the stadium lights. I, like I said, I have no idea how much it costs to turn those lights on, but I bet you it's a pretty penny to turn those lights on every time somebody's practicing over the high school. Again, living right behind the high school, those lights are shining in my eyes, uh, trying to sleep. Uh, one time the school board, the school, high school turned the lights on at 6.30 in the morning. For what reason, I don't know. I've gone up and talked to Eric, the principal of the high school, a couple times about this problem and nothing has been resolved, so I felt the only other recourse I had was come to talk to the school board, and maybe you can talk to the a school board principal, to the principal and ask if there's some solution we can come to. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have additions and corrections to the agenda. Dr. Bowden, are there any additions and corrections? Yes, there are two corrections. Item seven, there are two addendums that have been added to the approval of instructional classified personnel report. And then on item 19, there is an attachment that was added to the approval of the ranking of qualified and certified design build firms to provide design build services for minor design construction projects pursuant to non-exclusive continuing contracts. I need a motion for approval of the amended consent agenda. Move Move. Approval of the amended consent agenda. Second. Any discussion? All of those in favor, please say aye verbally. Aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes carry. It passes five to zero. We do not have any um, new business today. Uh, anyone have an announcement or um, something to um, add to this part of our meeting? Uh, Mrs. Brown. Um, yes, uh, well, as you know, uh, we went up to the Florida School Boards Association meeting in Tampa last week or the week before, and you were up there at the uh, district superintendent's meeting. And um, there were a few of the breakout sessions that I attended to that I thought um, would be of interest to all of us, uh, one of them being a, a marketing unique student programs. And um, all of this information will be out there on their website, the programs that they showed us. Um, but uh, they want to make sure that you, you show that this program, whatever unique program you've got at school, will educate, entertain, and inspire, and that uh, it's a unique choice uh, it's not so much a unique choice, but the logical choice. But they, they talked about how to market all of that, and a lot of that goes with the social media part of that. So um, that was interesting. But the, the one that I had the most takeaway from was the one that we saw on compliance with Title IX. Uh, Title IX is, a lot of people think of it as girls in sports, 
but it's a lot more than that, and that's about discrimination uh, based on sex, uh, which brings into sexual abuse, um, even bullying based on uh, sexual orientation. And uh, they had there a, a checklist that they would go down um, if, if, an, if on a reported incident, and um, okay, this is what we need to do, um, and does this need to be reported to the police department? Does this need to be reported to children and families? And what actions are we taking to correct it? And I think when that gets posted, and I believe it's out there now, that we need to take that down and maybe look at it at our next board meeting. Because I think it's something that I think would be helpful for us to adopt as one of our procedures. And I'd like to share that with you. <coughs> Thank you. Anything else? Um, Mr. Robinson. Yeah, I, I just want to pick on Tomas for a second. I mean, I've known him since he's been knee-high to a puppy. Uh, I mean, he's got great parents. Uh, his brother, Trey, didn't go to Venice High, but he ended up going to West Point. It's not, it's not the same thing as going to Annapolis, but I, but I know Dr. Bowden, the Army guy, would, would truly appreciate that. Uh, his wonderful parents, Don and Rob, and, and, his, and Sarah is a wonderful sister, which I'm sure bugs the heck out of him. But uh, she goes to, to Sunday school, and, and he actually was an altar server at the church with his mom, so I remember that. So he comes from a really good family, and I'm very proud to be sitting up here with you, Tomas. Thanks. <coughs> Uh, I'm sorry, That's okay. Mrs. Ziegler. Uh, no, I just wanted to add, I had the opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. for an education summit, um, which is it has a large um, showing of Florida legislators, and I had a good opportunity to speak with um, leadership and our, some of our members of our local delegation. And as I shared with Ms. Goodwin, I believe, and I'll, we'll wait until we have it locked down, but that we believe we have sponsors for some of our um, legislative items, but also had the opportunity to go through in detail um, what our legislative, some of the items that we talked about as a board. Um, and CTE is definitely on the forefront of everyone's mind. You know, FSBA recently adopted that. Um, the coalition also has a, a portion of a CTE on their uh, legislative platform. But um, I will say that there's a lot of appetite both from the administration and both sides of the houses to, to see some kind of movement there. Um, and there is definitely additional interest as it dis uh, as it pertains to the the waiver. There are some uh, there are some in depth conversations that had taken place there. Um, I think we'll have some additional meetings that if it, whether or not it's going to be on DOE rules or what legislation. Um, I think there was some check and balance concerns that in Sarasota County, for example, I think we do a phenomenal job as it pertains to special education. Um, but where if you think of all sixty seven counties, they want to make sure that. There is some balance if there's a permanent waiver that um, what's that audit going to look like because they, the last thing they want is a student to be passed off on that waiver and then sit in a classroom and not have any engagement, which I completely understand. So I just wanted to share that with you guys as well. But it seems that there is a reasonable appetite for that as well. So, But overall, good, uh, good conversations and looking forward to session committee week starting next week. We are um, looking at getting that platform on a rack card so that we'll have that to uh, to distribute to all all the people. I've already given it out to the EDC, at least online, not, not the card itself. But um, we want to make sure that we get that to all of our partners in, in the community. Uh, Mrs. Brown. <clears throat> on Friday, I also attended the Suncoast Education Solutions Summit um, put on by USF. And that's where they pulled together um, uh, business leaders and um, educators and especially early education leaders because they're under trying to see the <clears throat> the uh, connection between early education and um, uh, getting a job um, and they see how that that continuum is there and how um, that um, and I think we see it in our in our <clears throat> our summer programs our summer summer learning programs that when you're working with the child, you work with the parent and get them educated to, to break that cycle of, of poverty. But there's other people out there that are looking at this and they want to pull it together that it's not just the uh, BPK providers, it's not just the K-12 providers, and it's not just the CTE out there in our separate silos that we're working together um, to help get these people working again and, and uh, pulling together. So I would uh, let you know the next time, apparently some people that fell through the cracks, uh, make sure you know the next time the Suncoast Education Solutions in it will be from USF. And they're making presentations to our legislators also. 
Uh, Mrs. Zucker? Well, I'd like to share that I went to see Baby It's Cold Outside last night at Booker High School, and it was outside. And they had snow coming in. They piped snow. It was, and it felt like you were really in New England because it was so cold. And uh, tonight is the Riverview High School's Kilties. And the 18th is Goshio Elementary. They also have a play that they're putting on. So lots of good things happening in our schools. So any of you uh, looking at this who are watching us on video today, check out your local schools and see all of the performances that are going on now. Most of it's free, so you can't beat that deal. Thank you. Well, I just want to say uh, thank you to the city of Venice, uh, to um, uh, the administrator, oh. Ed La uh, Lavely, and to Mayor Hollick uh, for allowing us to meet in these chambers today. It's a beautiful chamber, isn't it? And um, I think this has been a really convenient space for me. Right, but it but it really was a was nice and and uh, really an enjoyable um, enjoyable uh, workshop and board meeting. Uh, I want to uh, say that our next regular board meeting will be off a little bit from our normal of the Tuesday night. We'll be meeting on Thursday. January the 10th, 2019, can you believe it's 2019, at 6.30 in our board chambers because we're coming back to school that Monday, so we're giving ourselves a little reprieve of a couple of days before we have our um, regular scheduled board meeting. Uh, I want to wish you all the very best of holiday, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holiday, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Hanukkah, which just ended, what did I miss? Um, be kind to each other, be loving to each other, uh, and uh, with that I will say that it's a wrap.